So chapter six, lower limb, bones of the foot. So just like bones of the foot, uh, or just like uh, bones in the hand, we have our phalanges, okay? So there are 14 phalanges. We have five metatarsals, and instead of carpals, we have tarsals, and there's seven of those tarsals. So we have a middle phalanx, a distal phalanx, and a proximal phalanx, except for in the first digit, the big toe, we have a um, distal and a proximal, no middle. So this here is going to be your inter phalangeal joint, not a distal or a proximal, okay? So five metatarsals, seven tarsals, um, gives us 26 bones in the foot. So the first digit, like I talked about, the big toe here, we have the interphalangeal joint, the IP joint, interphalangeal. And then it goes to the metatarsal phalange because you have your metatarsal and then your phalange, so metatarsal phalange MTP joint. So second to fifth digit, so second to fifth, you have your distal. So that's the dip joint, the distal interphalangeal joint. You have the proximal, the pip, the proximal interphalangeal joint. Those are in digits two through five. Your central ray for your foot, the third TMT joint. TMT is tarsal metatarsal, TMT joint, tarsal metatarsal joint. Your TMT joint on your lateral, so with the foot in the lateral, you're still centered, central ray on that TMT joint. Your sesamoid bones underneath your first digit, your big toe. So sesamoid bones, like we talked about in the last slide, embedded in the tendons. So embedded in tendons, they are present near joints and they're on the plantar surface of the foot. So plantar surface. So you have two of them, one on a medial, one on a lateral side of your big toe. Your tarsals, those are like your carpals. You've got a calcaneus. The calcaneus is the largest. So you have your calcaneus there, you have your cuboid that's on your little toe side. So the cuboid is actually going to be a lateral side. You have your cuneiforms. There's three of them. You've got one, two, three. So you've got the medial cuneiform. You've got your intermediate cuneiform. And then you've got your lateral cuneiform. Okay? You've got the navicular. The navicular right there runs right along all three of those cuneiforms. And then you have your talus. Your talus right here, and it connects mostly to your calcaneus. So talus to the navicular. Navicular is um, runs the full length of the three cuneiforms, medial, intermediate, lateral, and then the cuboid on the lateral side. So tarsal mnemonics, um, anything that you can make up is fine. Um, this one that's in the book is come to Colorado the next three Christmases. So come is your calcaneus, two is your talus, Colorado is the cuboid, next is your navicular, and then three Christmases are the three cuneiforms and then keep in mind that those cuneiforms are medial, intermediate, and your lateral. So your calcaneus, <clears throat> there's um, several articular surfaces on your calcaneus. Um, it's the strongest bone in the foot. The tuberosity of the calcaneus is the most common site of bone spurs, so your tuberosity, that's your heel. Your middle facet is the superior portion of the 
Sestinaculum uh, Sestina tali. So, and then your calcaneus sulcus and the talus form the sinus tarsi. So the calcaneal sulcus and the talus. And that sinus tarsi, you're going to see it better on your lateral image. So you have your sestinaculum tali right here. It's the middle facet. So that's the middle facet right there. And it's on that superior portion of that sestinaculum tali. And then you have your anterior articular surface, anterior right there, and then you have your posterior. So this is towards the posterior part, closer to your heel, okay? Your talus and calcaneus. So when, I, when we talked about it, the sinus tarsi, this is on your lateral. So this is that sinus tarsi, and it's going to show up on your image as like a dark circle there or a dark spot in that lateral um, image. So that's your sinus tarsi. You've got your navicular over here, which means that these are the cubo uh, cuneiforms. This is your cuboid. So by seeing that cuboid, we know that we're on the lateral side. Um, this is your tuberosity of your calcaneus. This is also a tuberosity. So you've got this one and this one. Um, those are places for bone spurs. Um, you've got your facets. So one is your posterior because it's closer to the heel. You've got two, which is the middle. And then you've got three, which is the anterior because it is closer to your um, cuboid and your navicular, so anterior. Navicular, cuneiforms, and the cuboid, we've already talked about them. So cuneiforms, like I said, you've got your middle, you've got your intermediate, and you've got your lateral, and your lateral cuneiform sits next to your cuboid, because your cuboid is on your lateral side as well. Your navicular um, runs the entire length of your cuneiforms, borders next to your cuboid, also takes in your talus. Your talus sits on top of your calcaneus. So you've got your talus and then your calcaneus underneath. So your calcaneus underneath, your talus on top, right there. So this joint surface here is for your tibia and fibia, okay? Your intermediate cuboid you're seeing there, your medial cuneiform you're seeing right there, and then your navicular right here, which runs along all of those cuneiforms. This is your lateral view. This is your uh, your view looking down onto your foot from the uh, superior to the inferior portion of your foot. So arches of your foot. <clears throat> your arches are important. Um, they help support your foot. So you have the longitudinal arch. You have your transverse arch. They provide strong shock absorbing support for weight of the body. So your longitudinal arch and then your transverse arch. So that transverse arch runs this way um, from like navicular to cuboid um, is how it runs. So cuboid Cuneiform, from the cuneiform to the cuboid, that's the transverse arch. And then this is the longitudinal arch. So your ankle joint. <clears throat> the ankle joint 
um, is formed by the three bones, the two long bones of the lower leg, the tib fib, and then one tarsal bone. So one tarsal bone, um, which is your talus. Okay. So the tibia and the fibia join joint onto the talus. Um, it's called the mortise joint. So all of this is that mortise joint. So your tibia comes down and your fibula comes down and um, form that mortise joint on top of the talus. The inferior portion of the tibia and fibula form the deep socket or the three-sided opening called a mortise into which the superior talus fits. So that superior talus right here, your tibia and fibula fit onto it, form the mor mortise joint, and then keep in mind on that tibia, there is a tibial plafond, okay? So in this joint space is the mortise joint, and then right here, you've got that tibial plafond that also sits on top of that joint space. And then a 15 degree internally rotated oblique projection called the mortise position is how you're going to image that mortise joint. So 15 degrees internally rotated, it's the, you're rotating the foot and the entire leg, not just the foot, but the foot and the leg 15 degrees to image that mortise joint. Um, the distal tibia joint surface that forms the roof of the ankle mortise joint is called the tibial plafond or the ceiling. So once again, this tibial plafond right here, that tibial plafond is also the ceiling. So tibial plafond or the ceiling of the mortise joint. So the lateral ankle, you're seeing your lateral ankle right here. You've got your tibia, you've got your fibia, you've got your calcaneus, you've got your cuboid, you've got your sinus tarsi, you've got your navicular, you've got your Talus, and this here should be your um, anterior turbicle of your tibia. Um, make sure that you find this picture in the book um, and go over what each one of those are. This is the tuberosity of the, um, should be of the first digit, maybe the fifth digit, tuberosity of the fifth digit. We'll look at that and make sure that we know for sure what that is. But it is a tuberosity, and it's seen on the lateral foot and then the lateral ankle. So our ankle joint, <clears throat> um, this is an anterior and this is posterior, so we're looking directly into that joint, okay? So this is your tibia, this is your fibia, so we're looking at it if we were the talus looking up. So this is your tibial plafond, which sits on top of that mortise joint. This is your coronal plane, and that's why we're saying that we need to turn that foot about 15 degrees to see that open mortise joint, okay? So here's your lateral malleolus, right? Here's your lateral malleolus. This is the inner malleolar plane. From this malleus to this malleus, they form a 15 to 20 degree angle for that coronal plane. So if you're viewing that to look down onto it, if it's in its natural position, your mortise joint is open. When you rotate everything 
15 or 20 degrees, at least 15 degrees, you open up that joint, you bring it up, and then you're going to open that entire joint for the mortise. So here's an AP ankle projection, and you can see a little bit of the mortise open. Um, you're starting to close. You're closing this right here. So now when you've rotated that 15 to 20 degrees, right, See how this is completely open all the way through here? Just like this. Okay, so you're seeing the open fibula joint, you're seeing the open tibia joint. Um, everything by just turning that 15 degrees. you see that entire joint open where this is zero degrees you're closing your joint your tibia fibia joint is closed you're not seeing that entirely open okay so that's the difference between your AP ankle and your AP mortise alright so let's take a look here. We're going to jump to E. So that's the tuberosity, tuberosity of the base of the fifth. Digit, okay? The fifth metatarsal. You have your um, calcaneus and your calcaneus tuberosity, your calcaneus here, you have your, that should be your tibia, your talus, this is your sinus tarsi, your navicular, your cuboid, and your cuneiforms. So let's take a look. So A is your tibia, B is your calcaneus, C is your calcaneal tuberosity, Okay, so your tuberosity right there. D is your cuboid. Okay, so this is on that lateral side. E is the tuberosity of the base of the fifth metatarsal. So this is that tuberosity, okay, of the base of the fifth metatarsal. F is your superimposed cuneiforms. So each cuneiform cuneiform they all three lie over top of one another so it's the superimposed cuneiforms G is your navicular H is the subtalar joint so subtalar joint so this is your talus okay and subtalar joint so subtalar joint H subtalar joint I is your talus, so the talus right here. So this right here is going to be your mortise joint. And since A is your tibia, the top of that right in there is your tibial plafond. Okay? So anatomy review. So... <clears throat> This is your joint space. So we talked about the joint space, and that's just an interphalangeal joint. This is your proximal phalange, or the body of the phalange of the first digit. Um, this should be a right foot, okay? So C is a metatarsal joint. D is the head of the metatarsal of the first digit of the right foot. E is the body of the first metatarsal of the right foot. F is the base of the metatarsal of the first digit of the right foot. G is going to be your medial 
cuneiform. H is the navicular. I is the talus. J is the calcaneus or the calcaneal tuberosity, either one. K is going to be your lateral cuneiform. L is going to be your cuboid. M is going to be the tuberosity of the base of the fifth metatarsal of the right foot. N is going to be the um, metatarsal phalangeal joint. And then O should be the proximal proximal phalange of the fifth digit of the right foot. Okay? Proximal phalanx, fifth digit of right foot. Okay? So this lists them all out, um, gives you the guide for it, make sure that you remember them, and then always add of right foot. So this should be proximal phalanx of first digit of right foot. First metatarsal phalangeal joint of right foot. Head of first metatarsal of right foot. Shaft body of first metatarsal of right foot. Base of first metatarsal of right foot. Second cuneiform of right foot. Navicular of right foot. Talus of right foot. Tuberosity of calcaneus of right foot. Third or lateral cuneiform of right foot. Cuboid of right foot. Tuberosity of base of fifth metatarsal of right foot. Fifth metatarsal phalangeal joint of right foot. Proximal phalanx of fifth digit of right foot. Okay? So anatomy review, <clears throat> we're going to review more anatomy. Take this image and this image. Make sure that you can label them. Make sure that you know which each one of them are by themselves. So body of fibula. So A is body of the fibula. B is the calcaneus. This is your calcaneus right here. Okay. So calcaneus. C is your cuboid. D is that tuberosity, once again, of the base of the fifth metatarsal. E is the navicular, okay? So your navicular right here. F is your talus. G is your subtalar joint, subtalar joint. You can even call it subtalar joint, sinus tarsi, either one of those is fine. H is the anterior turbicle of the tibia. So anterior turbicle of the tibia. And then I is the body of the tibia or the tibia, either one. Just like a body of fibula or fibula. So A is fibula, so fibula, tibia. B is the lateral malleolus. So if B is the lateral malleolus, E is going to be the medial malleolus. Okay. So C is your open mortise joint of the ankle. So mortise joint, open mortise joint. D is your talus, because your talus, right, forms that joint of the mortise joint. So D is your talus. Talked about E and then F. This is that epiphyseal plate. 
you can see that it's not connected. Here's another epiphyseal plate. So this is a younger individual that those uh, joints have not fully, um, or the epiphyseal plates have not fully joined together. Okay, so use those slides. Make sure that you can label everything. <clears throat> We're going to start with this slide on the next video, and I will see you guys shortly.